It's five o'clock somewhere, which means I'm ready to talk to another friend and drink tequila. It kind of got out of hand. Ooh, ooh baby. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Liza. I'm here talking with my good friend Darlene. I'm going to be drinking Terramana, the rock tequila. It's delicious and I'm going to be having it neat. Um, do you call it neat in tequila world still? I'm not sure. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, uh, Darlene, what are you drinking today? Um, so I was supposed to have Terramana, but they were out of it and, you know, tequila yeah. in the time of quarantine. Um, so <laughs> I've got... Um, I'm, my Spanish pronunciation is horrible. Añejo Patron. Um, and I am having it with some ginger beer and a little splash mm. of lemon. So it's a Mexican mule with a little yeah. little achido in there, a little acid in there. To give it a little ding. Very nice. Cheers. So how are you doing? How are you adjusting? You know, we're a month into quarantine. Um, how is, is it, are you, is this like the new normal for you or is it still kind of hard to get used to? It's, it's ups and downs. Um, mm -hmm. So my, I feel like we all have the moment that we share our quarantine story. Yeah. So my, so far, <laughs> I, my clients and my mom, who is a hospital administrator, we had a sense through February that this was coming and we're getting ripples that are leaders were not quite doing what we would have hoped so yeah. I had all of my supplies laid in and a game plan ready to go um and so about a week before everyone else was isolating because I work with people who have medical conditions almost every client I work with has something that was on the list and so they were going into isolation early I wasn't feeling well, but it turned out to be an allergic reaction. So we didn't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we That's didn't know good. if I didn't have it or not, <laughs> whatever. Um, so first I was in isolation a week longer than like everybody else. Cause we didn't know if I'd been exposed. Um, mm -hmm. And then I had just started seeing someone. So we like had our, our like <laughs> farewell in like love uh, the time of coronavirus. Oh um, man. <laughs> and he was taking his parents into isolation because they're older and unwell. And that left me in the city alone. So I came to my parents' house. And then that weekend mm -hmm. we were like, oh, it's so weird. I can't smell or taste anything. I guess my allergies are so strange. And then like the next day they announced it on the news. And then four days later I developed symptoms. And I'm also in grad school and now we're remote. So I've been having to uh -huh. adjust to remote, like remote clients, remote grad school. And I was sick. And, and so it's just like every three or four days I've had like the next hit. So then also like my dad was in the hospital for a while, not with Corona, but with other oh, okay. stuff. Yeah. So it's just been like, so for me there, sometimes it feels like new normal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it feels like, okay, it's been three days since the last emergency. What's going to happen now? Right. <laughs> um, but on I'm the sorry. flip, oh, it's okay though. Because here's the thing is what I came to realize was, you know, as my friend, I'm sure we've talked about many times that I've, I've kind of been through a lot in my life and I've mm -hmm. had some real up and down swings in my life. And I've also had the challenges of uncertainty before which meant that right. I have worked through the skill sets around that before and one of the things that this has really shown me was how many more tools that I had at my disposal this time that I could mm -hmm. really roll with those waves in a way I've not been able to before I am getting my master's in applied positive psychology, which is the study of human flourishing, mm -hmm. which is a really weird thing <laughs> to be studying as everyone's <laughs> well-being. So it's, it's flourishing and well-being. So right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting from, from the university of Pennsylvania. So I'm like mm -hmm. where the program originated and there's, do you know who Aaron Beck is? No, I don't think so. He's the founder of cognitive therapy. So okay. like cognitive behavior, CBT. Cognitive yeah. behavior I'm therapy. sure I've seen the name. I just, yeah. He is our Freud. Okay. My, my world is so strange that on Saturday I was on a call with, with Aaron Beck. 
And I was oh, like, really? how did I get here? That's incredible. Um, yeah, well, because this is one of the things is that Corona is affording us this unique opportunity to connect with people in ways we never would mm-hmm. have in the before times. So things like that have been happening. But at the same time, I'm now involved in this community that like we know what helps people when they're struggling. We've got the right. science. And we also <laughs> know that it's, that, that we can move the target and moving the target is an internal choice that, that we make as people, right, right. but people don't know that. So here we are in the middle of this mass cultural, social species level challenge. And we're the people totally. who have tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been a weird thing to study at this moment. It's um, like it was meant to be almost, I feel like, you know, just where this has led you, you know? <laughs> yeah. You went into, you went into, you've been taking that into a private business where um, you left a job and this is what you've been doing full time. Well, um, I left that job just before this all happened. <laughs> yes. uh, mere That's weeks. It's all meant to be, darling. <laughs> mere weeks. Well, and the, the, the scary part is that what I had left that job for was Mm -hmm. not only a continuation of my coaching business, which easily has transported online, but it was also supposed to be workshop facilitation and public speaking at big corporate events and in-person development within corporations. I see, yeah. That just disappeared. (laughs) It's this push-pull thing now of I've got tools, but there's all of this uncertainty of what's going to happen to everyone's businesses. So what do people really have resources to invest in? And in some ways it feels like a lot of it's been pushed on us as the individual of how are we going to use this time to invest in ourselves if we have the Mm -hmm. bandwidth to do so. Because to your point, there's a lot of us who are lonely or we have these big open expanses of time we've never had before. And then there's the flip side of the people who are completely drowning because they have work and kids and no support. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like I've got a couple of clients who are single moms and they're just like losing their minds. Overwhelmed. Yeah. That's an interesting view on that side of it. Cause yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's different when you don't have like a family base of, ch- of children or whatever it is. Like, I can't imagine, especially healthcare workers that still go in and still have their, and they have their children and they have to, there's just all these different elements and these stories have been so sad and that can affect you as well. I noticed that a lot of our friends are getting really down. Yeah. And I am a firm believer that despair is not helpful. I would agree. But that we as as fitness professionals, we are leaders. We are meant, we are purpose-driven people. We have chosen a weird lifestyle where 90% of our time is spent living for others. And now that Mm -hmm. has been taken away from us. So what I want to do and what I intend to do with this challenge is collaborate with all of the fitness professionals in my life. If you are hearing my voice and you are one of those people, please reach out. (laughs) To invite them, I'm calling it a remix. So whether it's going to do a video like this, or you're going to lead a group fitness class, lead a guided meditation, create graphics. I've got some of my creative friends who are like creating visual representations of this idea. May is going to be rough, my friends. We are going to want this to be over. It's not going to be over. I already want this to be over. And it's not I over. Know. I'm like, we're, I'm there already. <laughs> but we, so we don't get to choose when all of this gets better. We only get to choose how we respond to it. And what I want to invite people to do is respond to it by focusing on three actions that we know um, decrease anxiety, insulate against depression, improve resiliency, and increase your sense of your own well-being, which is meditation moving every day and cultivating a sense of gratitude for what you actually do have. And Beautiful. what I, what I'm hoping to inspire in my fitness professional friends is they're leading with that message by joining the challenge themselves and then turning outward to the people that they have a microphone to. And it's the spread. Social network theory is this, you've probably heard of this idea that you are the conglomeration of your closest contacts. Mm -hmm. That is social network theory. Okay. So if we create a bubble of 
us committing to these actions, publicly talking about these actions, recognizing these actions and doing so with the intention that you can only control yourself and what you're going to focus on Mm -hmm. and like choosing to do these behaviors, then we have a ripple effect outward on our clients and they do on their households and their companies and their work teams and each other and the media. And like culture is what we decide that it is. Well, I just spent a decade like making my whole life about the human condition. And then I watched Mm -hmm. my dad suffer and then use all of these tools that we have to help him. And they worked. They worked fast, fast. Um, No, I agree. And I think it's so important that we like come together to share it and just, you know, it doesn't have to be you do it, do what I'm doing. It's just sharing. And I've noticed that definitely has a different effect on people. Because in these times, you get kind of defensive and um, scared and all that fear leads you to, like, don't tell me what to do. But if you're just listening, that, that takes things to a different level. My website is darlene.coach. And the website for the challenge is darlene.coach slash come what may. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also and information be in on the- in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll have, there's going to be daily posts to Instagram for just helping people be consistent. There's going to be daily live streams and blog posts and newsletters and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. And the hashtag come what may challenge. Perfect. I love it. Darling. I can't wait to do it. I'm just going to give you a cheers to that. Cheers, really my friend. <laughs> well, you were one of the first people to be like, yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. let's do it. Let's do it together. Right. Okay. So my saving grace in this whole thing. Um, you. I was going to ask what, what's been making you smile or helping. Oh, well, the spirits up this just one's fighting. On so midnight, <laughs> anybody who knows me knows midnight and Bruce. That's midnight. I don't know where Bruce just went. He was the one in the back, yeah. but, um, they had been living with my ex, uh, when I started school and I just took them back in February and, oh my God, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life because <laughs> since I took them back, I had, the flu. <laughs> I had the flu, I had coronavirus. I evacuated my home. My career took a weird left turn, mm-hmm. um, blah, blah, blah. So they help immensely. Totally. <laughs> the other thing that's been making me smile, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't had, I haven't used the B word in a very long time. Uh, and occasionally I will, different B word, not bitch. Uh, I figured. <laughs> and occasionally I will, you, be, you know, five weeks, five weeks away from your partner is hard, hard a number of weeks to be Especially away Especially when it's like a long Random. time coming. <laughs> Long time coming and brand new. I don't know how yeah. he feels. I have not told him that I've been talking about him on these podcasts because I know he won't ever hear. Because this is the second time it's come up in an interview. Um, and I. Well, it's not a direct name. So no. unless you really know, unless someone really knows, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so every once in a while, I'll just look at him and be like, I'm your girlfriend. As a oh. And he'll be like, yes, you're my girlfriend. Like, he'll be like, yes. Um, well, it's still weird, I'm sure. Like it's I mean, been a long, like it's a long time. So it is a long time. It's a long time, Kevin. But a, that was something I talked about with Jared the other day because I was asking him if he's like talking to girls online, still trying, you know, that whole world. <laughs> um, Tell and, me more. What is he on Jared? <laughs> no, he. Well, his answer, which you know, whether it's true or not, is he's ha- he's a, he's happy just kind of creating like good relationships and trying to find people he can actually talk to um you know of course missing the physical but it does give you that opportunity to really connect and build a like a good relationship and I you know I all miss the physical (laughs) well I don't oh my oh (laughs) don't brag don't brag it's not fair to the rest of us it's one thing I get. <laughs> I mean, you have you do have that benefit. I have a hot tub. You have sex. Oh, you got a hot tub. That you know, both of those together would be say, the perfect scenario. <laughs> don't you know that sex in a hot tub is very bad for the I know for the female for the, situation. For the <laughs> yeah, my tchotchke does not want that. I know. Um, I'm kidding. I'm just good old fashioned land work at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've ever played Sims, you know they get to have. They get to do it in hot tubs in the games. <laughs> they also pee themselves in the middle of the living room, but that is true. They do a lot of weird things. <laughs>
Let me just have one more cheers. Cheers. Hello. Drink. I'm a little tipsy, okay. my friend. <laughs> I know. <laughs>